try to keep it as brief as possible here. And you have a handout in front of you, or you should have. If you don't, I can make more copies up. Um, and the handout is pretty thorough, I hope. I'm sure I missed something, but um, some of the stuff might even seem like common sense to you. But I found after doing this for a few years that sometimes you forget about the common sense stuff. And you'll go to, you'll try to get everything together, and you'll do the simple thing of just forgetting an extension cord or, you know, a table or something like that. So I tried to be as thorough as possible. Um, and so just a real quick introduction. Key to Truth is the name of the, web, the website, keytotruth.com. And it was started by a group of guys, uh, Kurt Bray, who is now in Montana, uh, was going to uh, Steve Ross's church in Genoa City. And he, he had a, uh, a thought about trying to create some way to where we can be a little more effective, not only in sharing the gospel and evangelism, but also getting the saints in the church involved with it more. And so a couple of the guys, and this started at um, Steve Ross's church, uh, a couple of the guys there, uh, Charlie, myself, uh, Chris Bongard, a couple other men here at the assembly, um, and at the Genoa City Church got together, and, and we, we wanted to put something together where we could be more effective with sharing the gospel, getting out there more often, but in a way where it's going to be easy for the saints, because I'm sure we've all been there, where either for ourselves it could be intimidating sometimes to share the gospel, and for most people that don't share the gospel in, in your church, it's the same thing. There's, there's the issue of fear, and they're afraid to share. Um, so we wanted to create a system that made it as easy as possible. So when it comes to you know, sharing the gospel with complete strangers, this has turned out to be an extremely effective way, an extremely easy way. And we've had a lot of testimonial from people that have, you know, always were afraid of sharing the gospel and real timid. They weren't people, you know, they weren't good at talking to people. Um, they weren't go-getters, and, and they were introverts, and they were able to do this, and they loved it, and they were good at it, and they learned it. So what I want to do is share with you what we have, um, and, and by the way, this is not something that is Shorewoods. The reason we called it keytotruth.com, we want it to be general. We want it to be an umbrella-type ministry, something any church could use, any Grace Church could use. So we, we've, we've put together what works for us. I was just talking to Steve right beforehand, and we were going over some of these questions, and he was telling me some of the questions he was using. And they're going to do the, their fairs up there in, in Wisconsin, and they're going to be used, using different questions. And that's the way we wanted to, to design it, is, is have, have a core, kind of a skeleton system put together, but then you guys can take that, put together shell, and you can tweak it to what best fits your community, your church, and, and make it work for you. So the purpose of the website is, is, a three, is three reasons. Number one, an online track. Um, you know, we're so used to handing out a piece of paper, and so often that piece of paper ends up on the ground. And nowadays, a lot of people don't like to read anyways, especially with the younger generation. So we thought it would be good to create a website. Everyone wants to search the web for what you have, anything you're selling, anything you're showing, you're sharing with people. So we created this website to be an online track. So if you go to keytotruth.com, there is a gospel message on there for you to hear. There's also questions. We've got some of these similar questions here on that website that's interactive, so they can answer questions, learn about the gospel, learn about some basic Pauline truth. And it's a way that they can then submit questions, contact us, get, get in contact with us. And there's also a connect to church. Find a local church in your area. So a lot of the Grace Churches um, in the area are already on the website. So the idea is, is if you're at a fair, but the guys from California... Well, you can still be effective with, to him. You can share him the gospel, and now you can tell him about a church in California. And he can go on that website and look through the, find the church locator and find those churches. So if you are not on that website, you, you would like to have your church on that website, uh, you can contact Kurt Bray, and if, uh, you'll see later on his email is in the handout. So if you do want to have your church on there, give con, uh, contact Kurt Bray and give him your information, and he'd be happy to have you on there. So I just want to share with you guys what we're going through here, what's worked for us, what hasn't. Um, the first time we did it was at the Walworth County Fair. You guys can come up later and, and take a look after the message, but we have a, a few pictures here so you can see the setup we have. This is pretty cramped. What we had was a 10 by 10 uh, size tent up, and we'd have two tables. So we had everything kind of spread out a little more. And we had a bunch of signs and banners up to advertise it. So at the Walworth County Fair, now that's one of the largest county fairs in the U.S. Um, they estimate between 130 and 160,000 people go through the fair in a five-day, I think it's five days. We were averaging between two and 300 people a day that would come to the booth, we would share the gospel with them, 
and give them a prize. Some, some people, you know, they stay for 20, 30 minutes. Some people, it's a quick, you know, three or four minutes. But when you still have three or four minutes to talk to somebody, um, that's, that's excellent. It's not just that we were handing them a piece of paper and they walked by, but 200, 300 people literally stopping by, going through the questions, explaining to them what it means, and sharing the gospel with them. So 1,500, 2,000 people in a week, in, in five days' time, um, is very effective. So if you look at your handouts, the first point you'll see there is the startup process. I'm just going to run through these points here. The first step, the startup process, is the manpower. Um, we had a little core group of guys we got together. We did a little you know, powwow. We figured out, okay, what, what needs to be done, and we, we assigned the topics. We assigned you know, the responsibilities. So for you at your church, you're probably going to want to get a sign-up sheet together, um, maybe find a core guy that's willing to head the project, um, but a group is always better, and just find a way to, to get people that are willing to participate. A lot of these events, you need to have a lot of manpower. You know, if you have a fair for five days, you've got to be there every day from 10, you know, 10 to 10 whenever they close, and you've got to have one or two people there. So you're going to need a lot of saints that are willing, committed to being there the whole time. Um, and in, in that, with that thinking, like Steve at his church they did the Walworth County Fair. They called help from us. So we had some of our saints from this assembly go up to Walworth County Fair, which is about an hour and a half away, and we helped them out. So I know some of you guys are, have a local grace church, and there's other local grace churches nearby. Um, David Reed, I was talking to him last week. He's got a plan to do something in Ohio. Uh, he was considering doing the Ohio State Fair, which is a really big thing to do. Um, but the same thing, there's, there's four, at least four grace churches in the Ohio area there that they can work together on. So don't be afraid to branch out to the other grace churches to get help in this matter. Um, we found a, raise to, a way to raise money. This isn't something you guys have to do, but those coffee mugs we were selling the last couple of years, that was our way of trying to raise money to pay for the giveaway items, the swag stuff that we were giving. So if you guys want to look into a, way, a creative way of raising money for that. Uh, point two is gather information. One of the most difficult things was finding the festivals and then getting in contact with somebody. Um, you know, you could just Google, you could go to your township, and it's really difficult to find stuff. So I would Google 4th of July. Almost every town's got a 4th of July festival, a Labor Day festival. Um, you Google a festival or fest or days, like Rolling Meadow Days, for example. A lot of towns have their own days or their heritage days. I would recommend finding something in your town where your church is. Um, Steve's done two events, the Walworth County Fair and then Genoa City Days. The Genoa City Days is where the city is located. That's been the most effective for getting people into the church. Um, it's, it's their town and it's their church, and it seems, a little, it seems to just work a little better. So try to find something in your area. But obviously you can branch out. You do your county, you do, you do the neighboring county. Uh, neighboring towns. Uh, nowadays, everyone travels to church a lot of times anyway, so anything you know within your 10, 20, 30-mile radius is a possibility. Um, connection with the assembly is really important. Last year, I tried to contact about a dozen different places, and I struck out on all of them but one. Uh, the government doesn't like to talk to you. They work for you, but they don't want to work for you. They don't want to call you back. You know, the, Their job is you, you call your town, and their job is to, to help you and, and give you information, and they just don't call you back. So it was really frustrating trying to contact all these people, and no one wants to talk to you. Or if they do, they find out you're a church, and they don't want to help you anymore now. Um, but then after I was talking to a couple guys, I found out one guy, the Lions Club, by the way. The Lions Club is a great organization to work with. We've done it with two different Lions Clubs. Um, I was trying to get in contact with one Lions Club, couldn't get a hold of anyone. Then I found out one of the guys in the assembly, his dad's a member of it. So I wasted hours trying to call these guys over and over again. I could have just found that out. So, you know, make announcements, ask people in the church, friends, family. You know, do you know someone that you could talk to that has a connection that can, can get you right up to the front of the line to get the information you need? Um, the third point, pay attention to the cost. Some of these booths are expensive, so you obviously you're going to want to itemize, prioritize. Um, the Walworth County Fair was $300 for five days. That's very reasonable. Um, Lake County, a uh, county nearby to us, is about $1,200 for five days. That, that's a little more. Um, you do a state fair, and it's even more than that. Some of the festivals can be very expensive. The Lions Club was great. The Lions Club didn't charge us anything. It's a much smaller venue. We did a Lions Club in Fox River Grove, down the street from here. 
and there was maybe two or 300 people total at the whole event. And there's you know, half a dozen booths set up. It's, it's not a big deal, they do it at a park, but it's free. They don't charge anything to be there. There's not a lot of hoops to jump through. And yet, in five hours' time, we still had 70, 80 people come through the, through the booth that we shared the gospel with. That's a productive day still. So you don't have to go big time. You don't have to go six days, two weeks, four week long event. You can, you can keep it simple to a weekend, you know, or just one day. So uh, look into that stuff, but pay attention to what what's the requirements are. The cost can be expensive. Sometimes you have insurance. Your church has to have insurance. Uh, you want to let them know you're, if you're a 501c3 charity, that helps you with the cost a lot of times. So just do your due diligence there. Uh, the fourth point there, signs. You want to have a church sign made up. I would, I would recommend. You, you want to present yourself in, in a professional way. Um, over the years, we've gotten better at that. I was looking at some of the pictures of the first year, and, uh, you know, it was a little put together, patched together. You know, we didn't have the greatest uh, design set up. So I would definitely recommend investing in a, in a sign that has your church name. Maybe you want to put a right division chart up. I know we had some success with the right division chart up. We put that in the background, and people would be walking by, and they'd, they'd just stop. And they'd, they wouldn't come to the booth. They'd, they'd just sit, and they'd stare at it for like five, ten minutes. And then they'd come to the booth after they, you know, the shock was over. Um, so, you know, things like that to attract people's attention is good. If you look at the, in the supply list, you'll see some of the suggestions we had. We had signs like um, win a free prize, fail a test, win a prize, test your Bible knowledge, uh, what most churches won't tell you. So, you know, be, be creative with the signs you want to put up. You want to attract people. You want them to come over and see what you have. So you're going to have, you know, some boards up here and a bunch, some balloons and a bunch of, of, of gadgets all over your table and some signs kind of attracting them in. So definitely work on some signs. You'll see the information in the supply sheet for that. Um, the fifth point was, was just don't forget about the basic stuff. I kind of mentioned that already. Make a list. Make a, make a list of all the stuff you need, your chairs, your tables. You know, we have a tent. Um, we, 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 we set up a 10 by 10 tent. You know, you're going to need bungee cords to hold your signs on or you want tape, you know, helium, balloons, all that stuff. It adds up. It's a lot to remember. So, you know, be thorough and prepared for it. Um, the next point is the literature. Now, the event I did last year, I made the mistake of bringing a box of literature a cardboard box full of about 50 different pamphlets, all mixed up. And we set that on the table, and then you, someone wants something, and you're kind of uh, scrambling around trying to figure out what to give them. And then you're not really sure what you want to give them. So I think it's important to keep it short. Don't, don't give them too much stuff. Um, give them what they need. Sometimes we would have someone come to the booth, and we don't even know if they're saved yet, and the first thing we'd want to give them is we'd hand them this one. Now, this is, this is good to give people if they're ready for it. But if somebody's not saved, this is either going to make them think you're a cult or crazy. And neither one's the result you want. So what, we, what we're doing now is we want to be a little more precise with what we're giving them. And we don't want a bunch of literature just thrown all over the place. So for the lost people, we, you're going to have a gospel track, like where am I, I mean, going to heaven track. And then we were carrying the Dictionary of the Gospel by Tom Bruchet. This is, so if you're going through and you're talking to someone and you're finding out that they're newly saved or maybe they're not saved or they just got saved, that's a book you'd want to give them. Ground them and establish them in the basic stuff, making sure they know they're saved, how they're saved, and that they can't lose it. Um, another, verse, another thing that would be good we have is um, Brian Ross has a Truth versus Tolerance pamphlet he did. That kind of reaches those people that have the questions more along kind of apologetics or maybe maybe they're saved, maybe they're not, but they're kind of a little more politically correct, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, that's something to kind of explain to them, you know, well, what is truth? And, and if, if they're thinking along those lines. Uh, another thing we would have would be something for more an established saint is The Big Picture by John Verstegen. We were handing that one out, too, as well. So if someone came through and we, 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 right away we knew they were saved. And we moved on to the next board, and they started to understand, oh, yeah, I, I've heard about Paul. I know he's different. I've noticed that what he preaches is different. And you, and you can see that they have not only some understanding, but more importantly, they have an interest than we would give it to them. Obviously, the books aren't cheap. You don't want to be handing them out to every person coming through your booth. But as you talk to people, some people you're going to be able to tell have an interest. You're going to be sitting there talking to them for 20, 30, 40 minutes. If you can give them a book for free, you know, that means a lot to them. Um, and by the way, make sure you, you mark everything with your information. You don't want to hand them a book 
and then they don't have a way to get a hold of you. So whether you're handing out free bracelets, sunglasses, booklets, tracks, make sure you guys you know, put your church information, website, phone number, whatever it is on there so they can get a hold of you. Um, the seventh point, oh, and by the way, another thing that we have is just something really simple just about our church because sometimes all you want to give them is this. So you might not want to give them something expensive like a booklet, but you want to say, you know what, we're, we're, we'd like to have you at our church. If you want to stop by, we're just down the street. Here's a little something about who we are, what we do, what we preach. And you can give them that and hand that out with the track. Uh, the seventh point was the, the swag stuff, you know, the stuff we all get. Now, you don't have to do this, but I think everyone knows this. Everyone likes free stuff. Everyone likes free stuff. It doesn't matter what age group you are, you like free stuff. So when you have a booth set up and you're challenging someone to come and take a test and they know they can win a prize for free and then maybe they're still on the fence and you say, even if you fail it, you still get a prize. Okay, then they come over. And you got your bracelets and your sunglasses, you got whatever you want to do, you got it all dangling around. It's like fishing. It's got to be shiny and colorful and you got to move it around and they'll, they'll come in. You'll get your bites. So... You know, I would recommend doing the swag. Now, the problem with the swag is it gets expensive, right? I mean, it's not cheap to buy bracelets and sunglasses. So the bracelets vary in price, but they were probably around the 60 cents, 70 cents a piece. The water bottles, the sunglasses, those are about a dollar fifty, more like a dollar seventy. Um, so that, that can add up, obviously, if you're doing an event. Let's say you, at the Walworth County Fair, you hand out 1,500 items. That's a lot of money in five days. So obviously, you also want to make sure how are you going to hand stuff out? Because some people come up and they're like, oh, I'll take one of those. I'll take one of those. Take one, and you're like, two, four, six, ten dollars. Oh, man. You know, it adds up. So sometimes you might just want to give them one prize. You do both, you do both boards, you get one prize. You know, sometimes kid, the kids want a bracelet and sunglasses. We give them both. We wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be Nazis about it. But you don't want to go crazy giving everything away. Um, and the, the eighth point that I think is really important is an evangelism training course or class. If you're going to do this at your church, you want to make sure you need to have the manpower. You want to make sure your manpower is equipped and prepared for it. Um, you want to make sure that they know how to share the gospel, how to do it effectively, how to deal with those objections, those questions people are going to have, how to deal with people that maybe are a little aggressive and want to debate, how to diffuse those situations. So I would also recommend doing an evangelism training class, you know, a couple weeks, three weeks, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, we did it here a few weeks ago. We brought the boards in, actually, and we just did a couple dry runs, let people come up and see how we do it, how we, how we present it to people. And first of all, that just kind of makes them feel comfortable with what they're getting into because they might be willing to go to this and they have no idea what they're getting into first. But you bring the stuff with and they can try it a little bit. It's going to make them feel a little more comfortable. And then once they're do there and they do it a couple times, they'll be totally fine. If you have any interest in that, I know Alex has got some really good material on an evangelism training course. I'm sure he'd be willing to share that with you guys if you wanted, so you can contact Alex on that. Um, so the fourth point there, or I'm sorry, on the fourth page now, you'll see using the question board. And I haven't explained the question boards yet. I have two boards here, and our goal is, 1 Timothy chapter 2, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Our first board is to get people saved. Our second board is to bring them to the knowledge of the truth. Now, maybe you want one board, and that's fine, but I would strongly recommend that your first objective is to get them saved. I know we're all excited about right division because we all came from religion where we were blinded, and we heard, we heard this, and it opened our eyes, and we are excited about it. But people can't get excited about that until they're saved. So it's always important that we're focused on what our goal is. We're ambassadors for Christ. We are to share the good news, the gospel, the grace of God first. So with the boards, we have the two boards with two purposes. Um, it's a, just a simple toggle switch with the light that turns on if you get it right or wrong. So our first board is, how do I get to heaven? So we would invite people over. We have them take the test. And we specifically designed this one, and you can twist it, change it around if you want. But we specifically designed this one to where all of them are no. And the reason we did that is because all the answers are them trying to do something. So the first one is... Do, what do I have to do to get to heaven? Obey the Ten Commandments. Well, everyone hits yes on that one. And then you follow that up with, do you know the Ten Commandments? And no one knows the Ten Commandments. I had two little kids. I had one little kid come by. The great thing about the kids is they do it, and they find out they got something for free. 
and they just go run until all their other friends on the playground. And then you see them come back with like a whole herd of them. So this one kid, he did it, and he comes back with his, kid, his friend, and he's like, yeah, yeah, do, do, do the prize. So he comes up, we get to the first one, obey the Ten Commandments, you have to do that to get to heaven. So the kid goes, yeah. I'm like, well, do you know what the Ten Commandments are? He's like, no. I'm like, well, there's sins. Have you ever sinned? He's like, I don't think so. I'm like, well, have you ever, like, disobeyed your parents? And his friend next to him, he puts his arm around him. He's like, you might want to change that. <laughs> so he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, half the fun is you've seen the reactions of the kids and the adults. Or you get the kids... With the with the the proud parents, my, my my children go to church. They know, yeah, son, yeah, Jimmy, go go do the go do the quiz real quick. So they come up, and they start getting them wrong, and the parents start doing a double take, like what? <laughs> no, are you sure? We had one lady. She came up with her kids, all proud, and by the second one, she grabs her kids by the collars. No, we don't we don't believe this stuff, kids. Let's go and carry them away. <laughs> so obey the Ten Commandments, live a good life, pray every day, be water baptized, give money to the poor, go to church. Out of, out of 100 people, maybe two people would get them all right. Maybe two. Now, half of them maybe would get all those right. But then the last one was the kicker. Confess and turn away from your sins. That one got everyone. So what we would do is we'd share that with them. And then we'd say, you know what the common thread in all of this is? This is all you trying to please God. You can't please God. So now what you've done is you've created open dialogue with someone. And you've addressed the first critical issue, which is we can't please God. We're all sinners. Now you've opened up the door. Now you, you, and you're already in a conversation. So you see how much more relaxed it is, how much more fun it is? You're not walking down the street with the, with the blowhorn trying to attract people, yelling at them, trying to hand them something. They've come to you. You're offering them a free prize. The kids get to play a little game. It's fun. And now you're in a conversation about where they're going to spend eternity. So now you've addressed, hey, you know what? You can't please God to get to heaven. And you know what? We always fall short of it all the time. And not only do we fall short, but our falling short has consequences. And now you share the gospel with them. We can't do it. We're sinners. But God did something for us. So then you can take them to the next board. The next board is test your Bible knowledge. Now, we wouldn't bring everyone to this board. Some people, they're done by the first one. You know what? That's okay. You don't, you don't have to force them to do it all, especially sometimes the kids. You know, a little kid doesn't care about some of these questions. They're not going to know them. You don't need to go there with them. But... If they want to do the next one, the first question we have on this board is to verify what they learned on that board. And on your handouts, I have listed in there the questions that I have. I think it's the fifth page or the sixth page. You'll see the board questions, page five. And those are the questions we have on the two different boards. So the goal of this one is to, first of all, make sure they got that and they weren't just giving us the answers they knew we wanted to hear. So the first question is, can I, can I lose the free gift of salvation? And you know if they get that wrong, they didn't understand that. So now what you're able to do is, is, is confirm that they can't lose their salvation because their sins have been paid for in full. The second one, God will forgive only the sins I confess. Okay, now we're, now we're getting into a little bit more what people think of, of God or religion, right? Performance-based, the law system. So we wanted to go from make sure they're saved. Now let's try to explain to them and get some conversation going about law and grace. Performing and understanding you're already accepted. In God's grace. And then we have God teaches us by his grace today, not the law. And there's an opportunity to kind of explain what those differences are. But now we're also kind of moving towards, hey, God's taught different things at different times. He doesn't teach under the law anymore. And that leads us to the next question. God never changes, but his instructions for man do. So we're now, we're, we're, see, we're furthering the, the, furthering the board in the, in the area we want to go. And that's what's really important. You don't have to do these questions, but make sure that you're, you're driving you're driving towards a point, and you don't just have a bunch of random questions in there for no reason. Make sure you want to find out what you want to do with your church, your assembly, and have your, your questions in line with that. So then we would have one, should we obey all that Jesus commanded? That's a good one. I would definitely use that one no matter what. That one throws people for a loop, because as soon as they see the word Jesus and commanded, that's a yes. What would Jesus do, right? And, and so when they get that one wrong... They, they, take a, they do a double take, and sometimes they get pretty mad, too. <laughs> um, and then we have, is, is Paul one of the 12 apostles? So now you're, able to, now you're able to talk about, well, you know, Paul was different from Jesus. Paul was different from the 12 apostles in what he taught. He had a distinct message. 
And then our last question we have goes right back to the first board again, just to make sure. And that is just a basic gospel statement. Is the only way to heaven by faith alone in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Just to make sure they got it all. So that's what we do with the boards. That's our goal, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So you can have one board and, and get it all done on one if you want with seven questions. Uh, if you don't want to have two boards, that's fine. But just have a purpose with it. Uh, moving on, so helpful tips. The first point with the helpful tips, know the rules for each event. And I already touched on this a little bit. You need to make sure you know what you're getting into at each place. You're dealing with cities, counties, states. If you know anything about that, they have a lot of rules. Um, sometimes you have to stay within your boundaries. So you're given a 10 by 10 area for your tent. You aren't allowed to step outside that boundary and hand out tracks or encourage people to come in. Um, you got to remember, too, you, if you do something that they don't like, they aren't going to let you come back next year. So the way you conduct yourself is important. So obeying the rules is def definitely a good idea. So know the boundaries. Know what you can give away. You know, one place is like, don't hand out any Frisbees. You know, we don't want stitches. We don't want, because the teens come around and they want to see how far they can whip a Frisbee and they hit some person in the back of the head. So, you know, be smart with what you're handing out. Soft, fun things that they can't throw and be used as weapons. Um, water. A lot of them don't want you handing out water. Now, it would, it would make sense. You're at a fair. It's 90 degrees out, and you're offering someone some free ice-cold water that that would be okay. It's not okay. Because you're technically, even if you're not selling, and sometimes it's selling, if you sell, it's a whole other ballgame. So I recommend not selling. But they just don't want you handing out water. It's just liability stuff. They don't want you giving them water, and someone gets sick, and someone gets sued. and So we just give them water bottles, and they can go find a water fountain. <laughs> um, be organized. This looks a little crowded, I know, right now. We normally have two tables set up, so we've got it all spread out. But what we did a lot of times is we didn't have any organization. We had two boxes, and we just had this kind of small mound of, prize, of, of bracelets and sunglasses, and you couldn't grab the ones at the bottom because then the whole thing would fall over. So you want to be organized. You want to have a professional appearance. So when people are coming up, see, you've got signs put up nice. You've got a nice tent. You've got a table. You've got a box over here. You've got sunglasses over. Everything's nice and organized. You've got your literature in a stand. So take the time to do it right and look professional. I think it, I think it goes a long way. Um, and the take-home sheet. The sixth and seventh pages you have there in your, in your handout, the sixth one is the take-home sheet. This has been effective, I think, too, because sometimes people go through these boards, and what we don't want to do is make them think that we're just telling them what we think about the Bible, and then that's the end of it. I know a lot of times some of the guys at the booth would say, you know what, don't take my word for it. And you hear pastors say that all the time. Don't take my word for it, go read the Bible. So I would recommend having a handout sheet. Now this handout sheet you have on page 6 goes with the second board. Now if you're going to change the second board, obviously you're going to have to change the answers, but I included that for you guys to use if you want to just keep exactly what we have. You don't have to do any of the work now of, of making your own answers. It's all right there for you. So now you have a take-home sheet. They can show that the kids can show their parents. Uh, the, the, the adults, they can go home and study on their own. You know, sometimes people are walking by and they say they don't have time to do it. You can just hand them the take-home sheet. Now you've given them some literature. Now, now you've given them, really, and what I did is I tried to include at least one verse in which I spelled the whole verse out. Now you could just put the references, but the problem is how many people do you really think are going to go home, open up their Bible, and look up every reference? I mean, a couple. Now you can't put every reference on there or you'd have five pages. So you want, but you gotta, so you got to keep it neat and orderly still. So I, with each point, with each question, I would at least spell out one verse so it's forcing them to read God's Word right there in front of them right then. Um, so have the take-home sheet. Um, the seventh, the seventh um, page there, which is the one with the color, a thumbs up and thumbs down. Do you guys, you guys have this one? Okay. That one goes to a different board. That's this one here. You guys can come look at it later. I know it's small. You probably can't see it from here. The idea is to have something mobile that's not as big and bulky as this. Also a lot cheaper. This one's got, you have to have a battery or um, 
an outlet to run the power for the lights. Uh, you got to lug it around. You got to have a table. This would be more mobile, and this works almost more like if you're going to vote, where you where you take your pen, and there's holes here, and you would just punch a hole through whether you think it's a yes or no answer. So these this is the survey board questions, and these are also different than both of these. This one's designed more. Or the idea is, and again, you can change it to whatever you want. You could put these questions in here if you want. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. This was designed if you're walking around the park and you want to talk to someone. And the questions are a little more comfortable at first, almost kind of like you're doing a survey, like maybe you're at a, from a university or college. So the first question is, is money the greatest problem America faces? Well, everyone loves America, and everyone likes to talk about money. So do you think you're going to relax and make the person comfortable and they're going to start talking to you about it, right? Uh, do you think America as a whole is a more spiritual today than 20 years ago? So you're kind of just keeping it real general, America, you know, spiritual. But then you're getting, well, do you ever think about life after death? If you could know where you could go when you die, would you want to know? So now you're moving them towards sharing the gospel with them. And you guys have it there. You can go through it on your own. I'm not going to waste the time. But So what you do is you go through it. They can punch yes or no. And then they can pull the piece of paper out. And then they would have punched a hole on either the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And then what they can do is they can turn it over, and you, you can explain it to them, why it's right, why it's wrong. But then they can also turn the page over, and they can have the answers right there with also the verses spelled out for them. So that's another option you can go. So if you don't want to, maybe you, you don't have a local church yet, or you don't have a big group and you, where you can do something like this, and you just want to make your own little board where you can go out and do your own little survey. You know, after church, you go you go downtown in your town and walk around for an hour and do a couple surveys. Or you go to the park and do a couple surveys. The plan is to take this, you know, take some bracelets, some sunglasses, and a backpack and a stack of papers and go walk around for a couple hours. Say, you want to do a survey? I got some, I got, you can win a free prize. If you just take a quick survey, I got eight questions for you. That's it. And there you go. And again, you're, you're, creating, you're creating a comfortable atmosphere where you've, you're, you've got this dialogue now. So right off the bat, they're not afraid, oh, this guy's trying to share the gospel with me you know, turn and burn kind of stuff. They're not even thinking that yet until it's too late and they're already hooked, <laughs> just like fishing. The last point uh, I think was a good idea is having a scheduled seminar or event after you do a festival like this, after you set up your booth ministry. And this is going to kind of go in line with what Ted ta is going to talk about and Rick. You want to get them saved, you want to share Pauline truth with them, God's grace, but you also want them to come to church. You want them to keep growing. So how do you get them into the door? Um, we've done a few events. They've done events at Walworth. Uh, Steve did one last year where they had Bud Chrysler come in, and he did an archaeology thing. So he, he came in there and did a really cool slideshow about... So it was the kind of uh, topic that is interesting to people. What is the Bible, how does the Bible match up with, with the archaeology and the findings they have? Is it, does it match up and is it true? So I would recommend having an event like that and do it pretty quickly after you do the booth. You don't want to do it two months later. No one's going to remember. No one's going to come out. But you also want to have a flyer. So if you're going to do that, have a flyer you can hand out to them. Hey, here's what we have going on. It's going on in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. Here's what we're talking about. Another idea, have postcards. And this is what we're going to try to do this year. We're going to have postcards made up with the event information on it. So right there at the booth, we can say, here, sign up, fill out the postcard. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to email you 100 things. Just put your name and address on there, and then we'll mail this to you in a couple of weeks when the event gets closer, just to remind you, just a reminder for you. Or if, if, if you can and you're a really good salesman, you can get their phone number, go for it. But I don't know about you guys. No one likes to give out their phone numbers or emails anymore because they're going to get a bunch of junk mail. But just be creative. Find a way. Have an event to bring them, bring them in. I've got some topic examples there um, listed. You know, where is God? Mar you know, have, have a talk about marriage, finances, truth. Is the Bible relevant today? What does the Bible say about politics? Things like that. Just, just things that people are going are gonna to see and think, that's interesting. I'd like, I would go to church for that. And maybe you just have one day, two or three lessons. Have a potluck, vitamin, relaxed. Um, instead of maybe not, you might not want to draw it out. But again, it's all, it all depends on what you want to do, what works for you. You know, there's people from all over here, and everyone does stuff differently by them. Saturdays to some people is a day of fun and play, and Saturdays to some people, they go to church. I mean, 
Thursday, some people have Bible studies on Thursday nights, Wednesday nights, Tuesday nights. So that's up to you guys to kind of figure that out. So And, and keep the right focus. Remember, you're, you're an ambassador for Christ. You're trying to share the gospel with people. You do not want to fight with them. You don't want to get into debate. You don't want to be screaming and yelling. This is really good in the sense that we didn't have much of that. We'd have a couple people that wanted to argue. But it wasn't like they're screaming and yelling and, and, you know, like Jesus thrown over the table of our booth, like the money changers. But, you know, they didn't agree with us. And they were pretty, pretty firm on what they believed. And, but that was okay. And once you, you can tell when someone doesn't want to, when no one cares. You can tell when people aren't listening. They just want to tell you what they know. And you just diffuse it. Say, well, you know, thanks for stopping by. Take a prize. Enjoy the rest of your day at the fair. And you're done. And you move on. So just, just remember your focus, what you're there for. This is the great way to get people involved. You know, we had a guy that helped me last year. You know, he was kind of worried about it. It's not his thing to go out talking to people. It was just him and me at the event. I did the first couple boards. He just stood back and watched. Then he came up, and he did it a couple times. And by the third or fourth time, I mean, he was just cruising right through it. No problem. He lo- I didn't have to do it anymore. I just sat down and kept tying balloons together, and he took over. I mean, it doesn't matter what the personality is what your concerns are, what you think you know or don't know. This is something anyone in your church can do. So it's a great opportunity not only to share the gospel with people, but to motivate people in your church. That's what was great. Guys came back from doing the event at Walworth County Fair, and there's a buzz out there. They're telling everyone else how great it was. Yeah, man, we had like 100 people come through the booth yesterday. A couple kids got saved. I mean, that creates some energy, some excitement in your church. That's what you want to get. You want to get people excited about sharing the Lord sharing the grace. So, and kids too. I, I brought my daughter the last couple of years handing out balloons. Who says no to a little girl with balloons? <laughs> you know? Now you get a couple like 40, 50 year old guys trying to hand out balloons to kids that they say no half the time. You know, the mom, your mom pushes the kids along, but a cute little girl or boy handing out a balloon, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And then she'd hand them a track at the same time. The balloon goes to the kid, the track goes to the mom and dad. It's perfect. So, you know, it's a great way to get your saints involved, the youth involved, teens involved. I mean, if you've got teens at your church, they can do these boards. They can share the gospel with people. And that's what it's about. These teens got to know how to share the gospel. Because once they're not teens anymore and they're adults, are they going to own it and be committed to it? And this is a great way to make them see the power of the gospel. This is not what I go to church for with mom and dad. This is what I've just learned but they, when they start seeing people pass from life to death right in front of them by sharing God's word, that's the kind of conviction and power you want those teens to have. Uh, I guess that's about it. So any questions, let me know. Again, this is a work in progress. We've, we've changed a lot of things. It's a group effort. A lot of guys have been involved in putting it together. If you have any interest in helping, any suggestions, ideas, making it better, if you want boards, let me know. I, my father-in-law makes them. He's got a knack for making this stuff. I can't do it. I don't know about you guys. If you've got someone in your church that's handy and can do this, come take some pictures of it. You can turn it over, see the wiring, and, and, and go home and make your own. Totally fine. But if you can't, huh? I did. Yeah. If you can't make one at your home, or you, you, know, you, you take your own pictures and try to make your own, feel free. If you don't, let me know. And I can, I can make some for you. You guys can, we can ship them out to you. If you're coming back for the summer conference, I can try to have them made by the summer conference so you can have them for July. So um, if you do want the boards or the little, the little mobile iPad size board there, uh, let me know and we can have those made up for you. Uh, the cost is about $100 for the big boards. That's the cost to make them. And the smaller board, I think, cost was about $20, $30 to make um, around there. So just so you know, if you want to do that, but you know what? If you, even if you don't want to spend the money to do that, you could just have the piece of paper that just has a bunch of questions on it, yes or no, and people will still come to your booth. I mean, you don't have to go all out right away either. So it's up to you guys to do what you want. Again, this is something that shares the gospel with people, gets your church involved, gets you involved in your community, gets them to know you. And I know it's been a great help for Genoa City. They had a couple people from the Genoa City days that came to their church after that and have been coming there now regularly. So it's a great opportunity to get out there and share the grace of God with everyone. So any questions, I'll be here the rest of the day. Um, Charlie, Mike Taylor, you know, a bunch of the other guys here know about it too. Just let me know. You can contact me, talk to me later on. So thank you.